yourself, you lose the fear of life. And losing the fear of life will bring you home in time to a fearless understanding of your mind and your ability to work with it. It seems these these uh, mechanisms pop up during the time to struggle in a kind of a struggle to survive. It's a little bit um, not right calling them a thing that struggles to survive because they are only uh, they're not beings at all. They are habits of thought that have come to you in in fear from the very beginning of your life. And when you you put an end to the arising of new uh, mechanisms that are driven in fear, that those that doesn't happen anymore. Once you have done the once you have done the looking, no more mechanical um, fear driven things will come in your mind. But there are the ones that are there still are working to do what they think they should do. They don't really think anything, but what they are habituated to do to keep you safe from all of the things that could possibly hurt you. And in the and in the in the course of that, they cripple us in our lives and our understandings and our the, the way in which we can work with our lives and our understandings. And it seems that which seems like uh, seems reasonable that the more recent ones that have arisen in your mind go first. And you will find when you see that, that it's quite a relief. But as the years go by, new circumstances in your life changes, relationship difficulties, illness may trigger old hidden mechanisms, bring old hidden mechanisms to the surface. And this can come as a surprise and can shake our confidence in the process at all. But if you have control, if you have developed some control of your attention, it's really true that you can use it to better deal with these old conditioned patterns of thought and behavior. You actually can decline to attend to them. And when you are not attending to them, they die out more quickly than just to let them hang around until they, I don't know, get <laughs> starving. But they, but they do, they will go away. They will be starved no matter what you do. And, and uh, because they have no more food. The food is the fear that is constantly arising in your mind from the very beginning of your life. When the fear begins to go away, they make a lot of noise because they don't have their food anymore. If you don't have food to eat, I guarantee you, you're going to be unhappy about that. And although the, again, these mechanisms are not actual entities that have understanding and, and so forth and so on, as they, they become weaker, they become louder, they seem that it seems. And sometimes it can be a battle. I mean, a real battle. We know ourselves from our own experience that once the, the fear of life is gone and the, the mechanisms are trying to find a way to feed themselves, I suppose. Again, these are metaphors. There's nothing of that nature actually going on, but it is useful in 
not so bad to think of them as entities that are are in battle against the the uh, loss of the fear. And what happens in that case, and in particularly, the older the patterns are, the hardest it will be to free them. That's obvious. The new ones that have come in more recently are more vulnerable. The ones that have been around for years and years are well established in your mind and in, in uh, well, in your mind. It's important that you see that just one look is not magic in any way whatsoever. It's not a magic bullet. Truth is, there is no magic bullet that will instantly bring to you satisfaction and understanding and fearfulness, no matter what you do. All of the ideas that will happen as we recover from the fear of life can be ignored. The ideas that seem like it's getting worse or it's getting, you're more confused than you've ever been or you're being assailed by uh, misery of some one kind or another. All of that can be safely ignored. Nothing whatsoever is going to hurt you once you have done the looking. It, it will be, it can be hard and it can be not very happy, but it's not going to hurt you. <clears throat> a common, a common type of expectation that happens once we have done the looking is that we think that things should be different than they are immediately. I mean, that's what we've come to, uh, come to believe in. Things that are take long are not worth the effort. Things that are worth the effort are instantaneous. And this is just the way the fear has conditioned us, all of us, the entire human species. And you can remember that expectations, the expectations that just, the expectations are just thoughts. The expectations about how it should be magical, the expectations it shouldn't be hard anymore, it should be easy and all of that. Just decline to pay to it, just decline to pay attention to it. And it can't hurt you. Look only what, at what is here right now, not what has been here for years and have been and, and you are comfortable with and you can be comfortable with misery, you know. I mean, really, a lot of people get comfortable in misery. But just one look gives you a better way to understand your mind and actual understanding can bring you better to deal with it by looking at yourself trying to get a taste of what it feels like to be you you have removed the invisible ground of fear that underlies and controls your mind and that's just the case that underlying thing is on its way out the look is an act of self-directed attention. The act, the act of looking is an act of self-directed attention in which you are turning the beam of your attention inward in a direction not, not accustomed to go. This starts a process in which old, fearful, conditioned behaviors and patterns of thought begin to lose their food, which is your fear and is the invisible context of fear that has kept them alive, kept them alive all your life. In time, these old disease, disease mechanisms fade away, not without a fight and newer, healthier mechanisms begin to start taking their place. 
But this process can take many years. It does take many years if you do nothing other than the looking. It will come true. It will come to be the case that fear is gone in you, but it can take years, many years. We have a lot of experience with people who have done the looking, especially prior to the time when we be, be, begin to understand the value of self-directed attention. We have reports from people who looked at themselves many years ago, and then we, after many years, come back to tell us, you know what? Everything is good. I, I can't tell you how grateful we are. Everything is good. But that takes a long time. A long time. Self-directed attention, on the other hand, gives you a measure of control over the process of recovery from the fear of disease, and it also accelerates it. The more uh, understanding and clarity you have in self-directed attention, the sooner and more effective will be your recovery. You must always think about the fact that everything that happens after the looking is recovery. You're recovering mm -hmm. from a horrifying uh, disease that most of us don't even have any ideas going on. And, just, and it actually takes your, it takes your whole life, right? I mean, it yes. gets easier with the years, but it still continues. Yes, it still continues. Subtler and subtler things you discover, yeah. When you acquire some control of your attention, that in itself frees up a lot of mental energy, <laughs> mental energy, since you are not wasting time on thoughts, not wasting your attention on thoughts that are harmful or merely irrelevant in the moment. And because of that, your attention becomes much more focused and much more effective in, in helping you live your life intelligently. As, you, as time goes on, you learn to see your thoughts for what they really are. They are not you. That's really important to see. And it's sometimes hard to understand, but your thoughts are not you. And because they are not you, you can decline to pay attention to them when you, whenever you can or any you ever will. Just one look will not make you a superhuman and it will not make you immune to disease in old, old age or death, as Carla brought to our attention. But I promise you that if you work with your attention in the way that we offer, you will be much better able to deal with disease and old age in, and in a more sane manner without so much suffering. Disease comes, disease goes. Old age comes and it only Doesn't goes go. <laughs> <laughs> until the end. It comes and stays. <laughs> but all of that, once you've take, gotten control of your attention, which by the way, turns out to be the only thing whatsoever that you have the ability actually to do anything with. Everything else is, is, uh, <laughs> Automatic. Now, I'm not saying that just one look will heal your body. It, it may make it better. You may have a better understanding of what to do to help your body and help your bodily diseases or, or, or any of that. But it, it, it will not heal disease. It will not disease, to heal disease. There's no way that that can happen. It can make you smarter so that you can work with disease more effectively, but it will not help the disease, help get rid of the disease other than to give you the power to be more intelligent in the relationship to it. 
John. Yes, I just Carl. wanted to put this in context. It's like, it's like we were talking about this. It's because we have seen that every now and then there are people who seem to believe that this is some sort of healing teaching that will heal physical difficulties, right? We've seen that. This one look is a form of healing teaching and it will heal disease. And again, as Carla says, that's not, that's not true. But I tell you that once you're free of the fear and once you are completely in control of your attention, you have a much better possibility of working with whatever you work with to uh, heal yourself. To begin with, if you have a physical condition, the best thing to do is to seek help from a qualified person, a medical doctor. That's the best thing to do to begin with, because that will give you the access to a greater understanding of the, of the uh, way in which the, the disease is working and what the problems with it are and so forth and so on. This work, this self-directed attention is available to all, everybody in the world can bring themselves to get control over their attention, which again, I say, is the only thing we have that we can actually do anything about directly. And it requires determination and a good measure of mental strength to see this through. But you can do it. You know, people do it. I did it. Carla did it. And, uh, uh, and and we're doing pretty good, actually, <laughs> most of the time. And occasionally, you know, stuff comes up still yeah. stuff for me. Comes up. In my case, I have to deal with menopause stuff, which messes up with your head a lot. And I use, you know, what self-directed attention to help me get through it. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a it can be a huge effort in certain moments when certain mechanisms take over and it's a battle sometimes and you decline 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 you know it can last a few hours and then it passes sometimes it feels like a real battle yeah and sometimes but, all, it, but if you improve you get better yeah sometimes it it might feel you know in certain circumstances that you can't do it. Yeah. That the the the, uh, the uh, sickness is too strong to be able to actually do that. But whenever you do have the opportunity to do it, yeah. in sickness or in health, every time you do that, you get stronger, because that that's the only thing you can do that you can that can help you at all in the long run, in your life, for the rest of your life. And it works. But it's not a magic bullet. It's and it not doesn't turn bullet. you into Superman. There ain't, there ain't no magic bullet here. Nor and, John, nor me, any, and it, nobody. And again, as I said in the beginning, right? <clears throat> if you look at yourself and then run off and go on to do your life and we never hear from you, we have good examples, a good understanding that in five to 10 years, you will have noticed that things have actually Calm turned down. around. It yeah. calms down, right? You, you kind of relax. Turned around, right. Yeah. And But you know, if you want to wait 10 years to feel good, that's all right with me. But uh, I would think it would be much better to bite the bullet. You know, do something Jump. hard. Yeah, do something hard. And I tell you that that uh, it's hard, but it's worth every moment of it. And sometimes you might get really mad because you can't do it. You might get think discouraged. It's beyond you. Get discouraged. But as soon as that discouragement leaves, go yeah. back. To it. Go back. Yeah. Don't be guilty by it. Don't think that it's. You're guilty of being 
stupid or anything like that. Or lazy. <laughs> yeah, or lazy or whatever. But when the circumstances arise in a way that you can do it, mm -hmm. go right back. Go mm -hmm. right back to self-directed self attention and do it mm -hmm. right. Do it in accordance to the 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 uh, instructions instructions in the website. Yeah, uh, it, it's really important to for those of you who are doing this and are having difficulty and think you can't do it. It's normal. You get periods like that. It's really really hard and uh, you just persist you know decide for yourself i want to do this and when you can't do it you can't do it but as soon as you can you do it you know that's my personal advice <laughs> well first of all i want to give you a little context so you know what this is about <laughs> um i guess a couple of weeks ago we went down to an area in l.a called eagle rock we had never been there to see a new uh, acupuncturist and Chinese medicine doctor for me. And uh, so John dropped me at the office and he went to park the car and he was looking for a place to park, right? And he parked the car, came back. And then when we left the office together, he could not remember where he had parked. He had been in such a hurry to come back, you know, he really wanted to come back to the office that he didn't even think of writing down the name of the street or something. He forgot. Which if I can, if I can interrupt, is this. Uh, find that having self-directed attention and doing the work does not necessarily not take help. away your stupidity all the time. <laughs> yeah, you can, you know, you can still forget things, right? So we walked and walked all around. It's a, it's a residential neighborhood. That's where we were looking. And then there's a big avenue where the office is. We were in, behind looking everywhere, could not find it. We we walked for hours and then we just rented a car and drove home. And so I called the police. I did a lot of stuff. Uh, we called uh, uh, tow truck companies, you know, spent a couple of days doing that. I put uh, things on Facebook and other groups. I sent an email to our list. Say, if you live in the area, if you see a van that looks like this, let us know, right? With the license plate and everything. And then, uh, that was on a Saturday. Uh, three days later, the doctor called us to let us know that he had found the van. And it was parked like a block from the office, really safe in the motel parking lot. So that's the context in which we received this email a uh, couple of days after. Uh, after we have found the van. And I'm going to read it to you. As much as I'm glad that you found your car undamaged and that it wasn't stolen, I too find what happened to you somewhat disturbing. It may sound heartless, but I wonder how something like that could happen to a person who rebuilt their mind completely, no longer being afraid of life itself. Maybe you'd like to talk about it in one of your next monthly meetings, because your experience made me realize that I'm holding on to deep misconceptions as to what life without fear really means. So far, it has meant to me that one is totally effective in everything they do from moment to moment, with you two being some superhero poster children for that way of living their lives. And now it turns out that you are, well, just as human as anyone else, forgetting where they parked their vehicle. Well, there you go. <laughs> we are just like everybody else. There is no magic or, or uh, spiritual understandings that can stop us from doing stupid things. The only thing that can stop us from doing stupid things is to stop doing stupid things. <laughs> when you do one, don't do it again. The entire idea that what is needed for human beings to be fully um, alive in their lives. Satisfied. And satisfied that it must be, they must be perfect in every way. And this is, to my view, an, a great uh, example of the uselessness of uh, methods that claim to 
make you free of human misery mm -hmm. that, that that you will be forever free that you yeah, those things like that you live from oneness yes. that you live from presence that you are you know 100 percent clear yeah well good luck with that yeah, good luck with never that. seen anybody like that whoever says that that's the case either yeah. you're misunderstanding it or they just don't know what they're talking about yeah or worse but or worse <clears throat> or worse that what we're trying to to accomplish here is is for everybody who is doing the work with us that you stay human you're not superhuman you stay human, but you stay a human being that is free of fear. Mm -hmm. And if, when the fear is gone and you have some control over your attention, which is the only thing you can have control over, if, you, if the fear is gone and you have control over your attention, it's like nothing else. It is mm -hmm. the whole thing turns around. Oh, and uh, this has nothing to do with understanding the nature of being human or, or uh, you know, um, in the metaphysical sense or philosophical sense, we're not doing that. We're trying to, what we're offering here is practical, is to live a life without, you know, without having the fear control you. Right. So if you're here, uh, that's what I have to say about it. I am very grateful for the fact of you, you sent that letter to us. It was really useful to us and probably will continue to be, but we are nothing but human beings, ordinary human beings that have lost the fear of light. That's the only thing different from us. And we are, as I have probably <laughs> made you say, we are by no means uh, perfect in any way. Yeah, and being free of the fear of life doesn't mean you you don't, you know, forget things or go <laughs> crazy every now and then, or have some very old mechanism show up and drive you crazy for a while. But then you can stop, you can see, you have this little distance that you can see what's going on and you say, wait a minute, I decline to pay attention to that. That's all it takes. It's just an old defensive fearful mechanism. And that's it. Okay. This business of expectation. You know, the email has this idea that we are somehow different or special. And uh, that's just projecting your own expectations onto us, right? And that's what he says. He's the person who wrote is expecting that he will be like that because if that's what you achieve, right? So those expectations uh, are to be discarded as just another thought that you don't need to pay attention to. You don't know what's going to happen as the process develops. No one knows. We give you pointers, but each person is different. So when you have these ideas of what should be or what is going to happen, just decline. Decline to attend to them and see what's here right now. See where you were a few years ago when you started or however long ago you started. See where you are now. See what's changed. That can give you um, encouragement to continue. And don't try to predict what's going to happen or project some idea, of, you know, based on... Sometimes it's really unconscious. You, you just have this in your mind. You read it. And, you know, especially people who have been involved in certain kinds of spiritual uh, teachings and things like that. Um, we carry it with us, like somebody was thinking that, you know, you live from oneness, things like that. Oneness is this here right now with the computers and us talking to you and you, each person in a different country. That's the oneness. There's no point in even talking about it. I'm it's not sure what, what that means. <laughs>